amazing weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. Welcome back to the Weather Channel. We're still tracking Hurricane Delta as it approaches Louisiana, making landfall over the next 10 hours or so. And I'm in Jennings, Louisiana. Meteorologist Paul Goodlow, where we're in the, the brunt of some pretty thick rain right now. Uh, latest check of the winds here locally, 30 mile per hour, 39 mile per hour wind gust. That's tropical storm force wind gust now uh, hitting the Jennings area. So again, we're in the tropical storm force wind gust. We're not going to get out of that. We're going to get probably into hurricane force wind gust as we head throughout the rest of the afternoon into tonight. And then the eye wall comes. I just measured the, the, uh, the, the distance. We're about 80, 81 miles from that northern edge of the eye wall. So we're in the thick of some of the strongest winds and rain from now through landfall, through the pass of that eye. And the National Hurricane Forecast Center uh, forecasts and tracks that eye to come about 10 to 12 miles. Right now, more of a northeasterly direction, but as that center starts making landfall, we're going to see our winds shift from the northeast more towards the east, and we really can't wait till our winds come from more of a southerly direction. That means the eye has passed us by, and our weather should be rapidly improving. Even looking at the radar, it doesn't look like the south side of Delta is as heavily laden with the rain as the north side is. Probably still some winds in there, but once we get past that eye, and uh, the brief part of that uh, southern eye wall, which is still pretty intense, then our weather should rapidly improve. But that's not going to happen until maybe uh, midnight to 3 a.m. So we have from now till then to get through a lot of uh, pretty intense uh, weather. And I want to bring uh, Carl Parker in the lab. And uh, Carl, I mentioned it. We're at 80, 81 miles from here in Jennings to the edge of that eye wall. So what's the speed? How many more hours of this intense weather we have to go through? Because if it's still rolling at, say, uh, 13 miles per hour, it could be, what, six, seven hours of this we have to go through. Yeah, no doubt about that, Paul. I think that's right on the money, uh, pretty much. We've got uh, the core now just about three hours uh, less than that, two to three hours from the coast. And as you mentioned, another three to four hours from getting up to your position, moving at 14 miles per hour right now, but picking up speed, certainly, as it continues uh, hour by hour. You notice there's been some degradation in the cloud pattern overall. We are seeing a slow decline in intensity, officially a Category 2. The winds may not be quite that strong, but Still a very powerful core that is just about ready to come on shore. And you look at some of the winds here uh, gusting out of 52 miles per hour. It's going to be many, many hours of that. Still a lot of debris on the roads there in Lake Charles. Many homes covered with tarps. And so this is just going to make things worse there. Winds also gusting out of 56 miles per hour in Galveston. The hurricane hunters uh, out in the system finding a wind of 92 miles per hour most recently on the southeast side of the eye wall. And again, as Mentioned that northern part of the eye wall is now just about 40 miles away from Cameron and Creole and also Grand Chenier. So conditions really going downhill there in a hurry. And already we're seeing a water level rise of three to four feet, and that could rise substantially as that eye approaches. So here you see the model forecast for the winds, those exceptionally strong hurricane force winds coming into Cameron and Creole and Grand Chenier over the next few hours here. And then we're going to watch the core of the storm most likely move up and very close to Lake Charles, probably just east of Lake Charles. Winds not as strong there with winds coming off the land, so more
more friction. The strongest of wind will be coming off the water on the east side of that circulation. But again, many hours of this strong wind along with many hours of onshore flow and approaching high tide uh, this evening, Jackie. So a lot of the very same areas that saw a terrific surge in Laura are going to get hit mm -hmm. uh, again, unfortunately. Yeah, and the strong winds already beginning to cause a couple of spotty power outages in Texas and Louisiana, and that number is only going to go up, unfortunately, with time. Here's a look at power outages in Texas and Jefferson County. You were just talking about they're under the flash flood warning. They're also getting some gusty winds, so uh, just over 1,000, 1,500 uh, people without power in that county right there into southeastern parts of Texas. As for Louisiana, of course, Calcasieu Parish uh, has more than 6,000 without power. A lot of that probably due to Laura, but we've got plenty of others now. That number increasing now over 12,000 people without power in Louisiana. Power outages are most likely into southwestern and central parts of the state, but still pretty likely in a place like Natchez as well as Monroe. Uh, Baton Rouge, a good possibility all the way up towards Memphis, as you could be seeing some wind gusts uh, between 30 and maybe even as much as 50 miles per hour here. When you lose power, you have to you be really, really cautious, especially if you run a generator. Make sure that that is well ventilated and that is outside. Don't use candles or any other kind of open flame for sure. Stay away from down power lines. Always treat a down power line like it's live. We've got a new video just in from Scott, Louisiana. That's where our Mike Seidel is. He is going to join us live at the top of the hour. Don't go away. The takeaway here is it's still just a dangerous storm, not just the wind speed, but the size. The bigger the storm, the more the storm surge, and the bigger the wind field, more people will feel the impacts of that wind. Here we go again, another landfalling hurricane here in this Atlantic hurricane season of 2020. I'm meteorologist Paul Githa live in Jennings, Louisiana. We're about, say, uh, 45 miles or so to the uh, east of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and about, say, 40 miles to the west of Lafayette, Louisiana. And we're actually about 10 to 12 miles from that forecasted center position of Hurricane Delta as it continues to make landfall now through the rest of this evening. We will probably get into the actual center, the eye of Hurricane Delta as we head later on this afternoon. Our winds strong, gusty from the northeast. Last check of the conditions sustained around 30 miles per hour, gusting to 39 miles per hour. That now puts it into tropical storm force wind gusts here in Jennings. And that will only increase as we still have about 80 miles of weather we have to go through until we get to the center of Hurricane Delta. So you know, conditions continue to go downhill. We've seen well over an inch of rain so far. You can see even the wind whipping the rain even off the roof of this building here. You can see the trees behind me as well uh, blow from time to time almost sideways with all the winds coming on through here. And this is as good as it gets for a while. We have several concerns here. We're about 40 miles off the coast, so we don't have as high of a storm surge threat as you do across some of the coastal parishes. But we have a lot of bayous that feed into the Gulf. They're going to be backed up because of all this rain filling the bayous and the surge pushing that water won't let it drain from the bayou. So there's definitely con concerns with that storm surge still being felt here in terms of backing up the rainwater here. And then you see some of the power lines, a big concern with these winds as they continue to get stronger and stronger, perhaps at times gusting hurricane force. We're talking 70, 80, maybe even 100 mile per hour wind gusts here. We're going to lose a lot more power as we head throughout the rest of this afternoon and to this evening before things start to improve as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. But it's not just here in Jennings will be in the thick of it. We're also going to talk about areas uh, east of here. Let's check in now with my colleague Mike Seidel, who is in uh, just west of uh, Lafayette. Uh, right now, the name of the town uh, skips me, Mike. Uh, Scott, Louisiana. But you too will be dealing with uh, pretty bad weather from now, probably until after, well after midnight. Yeah, certainly uh, for the next five or six hours, we're getting some pretty heavy rain right now. We've gusted up in the low 30s. They're not as windy as where you are. We're 35 miles from Jennings and 70 miles from Lake Charles. So Paul is midway between Lake Charles and Jennings, uh, or I'm sorry, Lake Charles, and here uh, just on the west side of Lafayette. Now, what you want to remember is the center is going to go into our 
west and far enough away that we likely will not get hurricane force winds here. We may get hurricane force gusts, and that's going to knock out power. Keep in mind, with Laura here, they were far enough away from the center when it ravaged Lake Charles and Cameron and Kakashi parishes that they have some power outages here and just some trees down. This is Interstate 90. Uh, good to see not a whole lot of traffic out there today versus yesterday. We've got some cars, a lot of big rigs, and it's one of those days where you got to slow down. There's a lot of ponding on the roadway with this heavy rain. Uh, we've had this one squall come on through. You can see that on the radar. And then looking uh, to our south and uh, southwest towards the center, you can see we have a little bit of a drying trend coming in. And then we'll have more bands wrapping in this afternoon and this evening. Now, once the center goes north of I-10, which is our latitude, we'll start to see the rain back off here because this storm is front end loaded with rainfall. Many times this year, we've seen everything on the east side or northeast side, but this is really north of the uh, latitude of the center. So it goes north of us, say about eight o'clock tonight, Eastern seven here uh, in the central time zone. And after that, the rain should abate. Uh, quite a bit, but we're still going to have the wind. Once it goes by, we'll get those southwest winds, and peak gusts could still be upwards of 40 or 50 miles an hour. So it's going to be uh, pretty tough here the next five or six hours. Once we get uh, the uh, delta, delta circulation past us, then we'll get the southwest winds and the drying effect. The weekend looks fine and good for any cleanup we may have to do right here. Speaking of cleanup, they're still doing that in Lake Charles. Uh, Tevin Wooten, you were there for Laura when they had the wind gust upwards of 135 miles an hour. Fortunately, uh, it's not going to be that windy, but uh, the damage has been done. You've got all the blue tarps. You've got the wind that may take the tarps off the roof. What else can you tell us about Lake Charles right now? Well, Mike, this is sort of that insult to injury or a double whammy when it comes to hurricane season this year in uh, southwestern Louisiana in Calcasieu Parish and also Cameron Parish as well. First, it was uh, Laura in late August on August the 27th. Of course, Beta came through. That really just dumped a little bit of rain, but it wasn't enough to injure the spirits of the folks here in Lake Charles. But then after that came uh, what we're dealing with now, Delta, a Category 2 hurricane. Now, as this storm is coming in, I am forecasting overall the landfall or the eye of the storm to be about 30 to 40 miles to our east, perhaps making landfall uh, near Mud Lake and uh, on Grand Chenier. But the problem, or in Grand Chenier rather, but the problem is on the west side of the storm, we're sort of seeing some of it right now in terms of the strong winds. The highest wind gusts we've seen so far today, near 60 miles per hour. miles per hour before this thing is said and done. As Mike has alluded to, as our, my colleagues have alluded to really all week long, that's going to do folks try to get on with a sense of normalcy and begin the cleanup process. They couldn't really begin the cleanup process because they had to prepare for another tropical disturbance by the name of Delta. So they are certainly feeling it here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. What we're feeling by way of rainfall, perhaps moderate showers at times. I think overall this will sustain, if not get worse, in the next two to three hours. So closer to four or five o'clock, some of the worst weather we've seen thus far with Delta right here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's where gusts come in 70 to 80 miles per hour. Then after that, the storm does continue to pull towards the north and east. But Carl, again, the damage already been done here for the folks in, uh, in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough night for them there, uh, Tevin. Thank you so much. And we have the new advisory from the National Hurricane Center. We continue to see this slow decline in intensity. Winds down just a notch to 105 miles per hour. Pressure is also up. It is still moving north, northeast at 14 miles per hour. And when you look at the satellite imagery, you can definitely see a degradation in the satellite pattern. But a very robust core there that is now approaching. And winds are stepping up uh, all the way around, now gusting to 50. 54 in Port Arthur, gusting to 56 in Galveston. It is only going to get worse uh, going forward in southern parts of Louisiana. There you see that eye wall showing up on the radar very well. It's now that northern eye wall now only about 30 miles away from the coastline. So areas uh, around Cameron and Creole and Grand Chenier in for some very strong wind. Holly Beach as well. And in addition to that, in a couple of hours, uh, not only are we going to see strong wind, but uh, we're also going to be looking at a maximum push of water on shore. Looking at some of the velocities there, this is the Doppler velocity data, and we're seeing winds of 100 miles per hour aloft. And so uh, easily there could be 90 plus mile per hour wind gusts. And again, that is now piling up the water.
We've had a water level rise of 4.5 feet, and that is west of Vermilion Bay. Uh, freshwater canal locks in three feet in Calcasieu Pass. That is only going to step up over the next few hours here, and we continue to see that onshore push. And so the maximum wind likely just east of Lake Charles. Nonetheless, wind still gusting up and near a hurricane force there for several hours. The worst of the wind in Jennings, as well as Lake Arthur and Gaida, and then moving up towards Alexandria as well in a large area of tropical storm force wind. And so the highest probabilities of hurricane force winds uh, just to the east of Lake Charles and right into Jennings. And that is where we find our Paul Goodlow. And Paul, I know it's already uh, been increasing there, but it's going to be a long night ahead. Even though this storm is moving along relative to a lot of other storms we've seen this season, it is still going to be many, many hours of strong wind for you there. Yeah, and also heavy rain. The rain's actually increasing as we speak here, Carl. It's great news to find out that uh, Delta is no longer a three. It's a category two hurricane, but it doesn't uh, lessen the fact that we're going to have a lot of strong gusty winds, perhaps gusting well over 100 miles per hour, even as it closes in here. And you mentioned that forward speed of about 14 miles per hour, and we're about 80 miles from that northern eye wall. You do the math. We're talking, you know, five hours, six hours before we start seeing uh, this, this weather slowly end. We get through that eye wall, maybe a brief respite in the eye and then the back edge. But then things should quickly resolve and, and, and turn better once we get through that eye. Because again, as even Mike said, I'll mention that you can see clearly on the radar. This is a front heavily loaded storm in terms of some of the strongest uh, winds and where some of the heaviest rain is. That's on that front side. So basically, six hours of this to continue here with even stronger winds coming on through, which is definitely a concern because we power outages is a huge concern here in Jennings, as well as more wind damage, uh, trees, roofs, being in, uh, house, houses being uh, jeopardized because of all the nonstop, relentless wind. You have to remember, you know, a month and a half ago when Laura came through, the strongest winds were still west of us around Lake Charles, but we had enough damage to bring down trees and even do some damage to some homes. So they've all already been kind of tested and some even weakened by Laura's winds. And now we have Delta's winds, which will probably be a little stronger because the center's coming right over this area. So we're not quite out of the woods in terms of the perhaps, you know, devastating the damage here as uh, we go through the rest of this afternoon and this evening. But I tell you what, uh, to think about five or six more hours of this, it's going to be a miserable day shaping up here yeah. in this part of southwest Louisiana. So we're definitely looking forward to uh, the south side of Delta and uh, quieter weather. Jackie? All right, Paul, thanks so much. Yeah, already looks like a terrible day there for sure. And with things already compromised, like you mentioned, you get that wet soil, it makes it a little easier. Uh, less wind can create more damage. We want to get you caught up right now with what we know about Hurricane Delta. About 25,000 customers are now without power in Louisiana and in Texas. Curfews are or will be in effect this evening for cities and parishes across that state, including Lafayette City and Parish. Times will vary so make sure you check with local officials. The U.S. Postal Service has suspended mail delivery, delivery and retail services in parts of Louisiana. This uh, storm is going to be affecting a lot of different cities in Louisiana, but also inland as well. So let's talk about a few of those impacts. And Lafayette, one of the spots uh, that's really going to get in the worst of the winds. Those strong winds may reach hurricane force from time to time, and that should really be hitting you here this evening. But wind gusts already now over 40 miles per hour from time to time, and that impact will last well into tomorrow morning. Three to five inches of additional rainfall can be expected here. The rain will be a big deal and likely to cause some flash flooding issues. We already have some warnings into some of the coastal areas, including into Cameron Parish and over towards the Beaumont area as well. And look at all that heavy rain getting lifted across the state of Louisiana up towards I-20, 10 o'clock tonight through the overnight hours. It's when some of the worst of the flooding could happen. But as the storm is moving a little bit more quickly, we're drying out, especially in southern parts of the state towards the coast uh, by tomorrow morning. So that's a little bit of good news out of all of this. How about Jackson, Mississippi? Uh, you're under a flash flood watch. One to two inches of rain, a good possibility. I think just west of Jackson will get a little bit more rain and wind. But still, your gusts over 40 miles per hour through tomorrow morning and 40 miles per hour. That's about all it really takes, uh, Carl, to cause some spotty tree damage and a few power outages.
is. Yeah, it's going to be a really long night there in southwest Louisiana. And we're also very concerned about what's happening along the coast. There you see the current storm surge flooding 4.5 feet freshwater canal locks. Uh, that is a relatively unpopulated area west of Vermilion Bay. But to the west of that, you've got Grand Chenier. That was the town where they saw a 13 foot surge in Hurricane Laura, in the town of Creole as well. And then Calcasieu Pass, that is near Cameron, 3.6 feet of surge. What's interesting about that is they're actually seeing an offshore wind right now, but that big push of water is coming in despite that offshore flow. And this is only the beginning of it as the eye wall gets even closer. Those numbers are going to step up and step up over the next several hours. So storm surge warnings, not just along the coast, but penetrating well inland, 40 to 50 miles in some cases, because you've got a lot of intertidal areas, a lot of estuaries. Uh, that is the nature of the coastline there in southern Louisiana. So when you look at the wind forecast, as that eye wall approaches over the next few hours here, that's when we're going to see the maximum push of water on shore. And that is going to be from Cameron and on eastward towards Grand Chenier and then down towards Vermilion Bay as well. But notice, even as the storm comes on shore, we continue to see an onshore flow near Homa and towards Plaquemines Parish. And that's going to slide even a little farther eastward towards the Mississippi and Alabama Gulf Coast into early tomorrow morning. So a large area of coastline being implicated here. That is the storm surge potential map. Uh, we may not realize that in all these cases, but the greatest potential for life threatening surge across much of the Louisiana coastline and especially centered in those areas from Cameron on eastward and towards Vermilion Bay as well. And getting back out to Paul now and uh, Paul, we talked about the fact that as the rain is coming down, those bayous are going to be filling up, but they're not going to be able to run out to the Gulf as easily with that onshore flow. No, and as you mentioned that, again, the heavier and heavier rain coming down now. So uh, that's the big concern, that inland freshwater flooding. And yes, even the surge, even though we're off the coast, the bayous, which basically this rainwater feeds into the bayous, the closest one is uh, uh, Bayou uh, Nepique, that's going to fill up because it can't drain. So even storm surge, the secondary impacts will be felt even here, you know, we're talking uh, 40 miles uh, from the actual Gulf Coast here. But the intense rain, having rainfall rates of four, even eight inches, not out of the question. So even freshwater flooding well off the coast, a big concern now as uh, Hurricane Delta continues to make landfall as we speak. Hurricane season doesn't stop for a pandemic, and neither do we. Get the information you need to stay safe every day, right here on the Weather Channel. Welcome back to the Weather Channel. Live pictures now from Lake Charles, Louisiana, with our storm tracker, Charles Peak. You see that home definitely uh, had a damage done because of Hurricane Laura when it uh, hit this area, devastated this area about six weeks ago, and now it looks like the, the damage will continue as Hurricane Delta continues to come on shore. We're seeing some of the, the strongest rain and strong, some of the strongest winds now buffeting not only uh, Lake Charles, but uh, Welsh, uh, Jennings, on towards Scott, even uh, Lafayette, all dealing with the winds here. Then closer to the Gulf, even uh, Cameron Parish, uh, seeing in some of the coastal parishes, seeing some of the highest water so far today as that will continue to rise as Hurricane Delta continues to make landfall. Good news is it's now uh, a Category 2 hurricane. 
But yeah, it's not going to be a tropical storm when it comes on shore. It's still going to be a Category 2 hurricane. Literally, the center is hours, maybe two, three hours from uh, making its push on shore. And I'm in Jennings, Louisiana. I'm about halfway between Lafayette to the east and uh, Lake Charles to the west here. And we're going to probably be in that eye in about, uh, say, six to seven hours from now. What does that mean? We have six to seven hours of pretty intense and intensifying weather that we have to get through uh, until we start seeing our weather start to improve on the back side of that eye. Weather should rapidly improve after we get to the eye, but it will rapidly also continue to deteriorate as we head throughout the rest of this afternoon. The winds have been increasing. We're now seeing tropical storm force wind gusts. Uh, last check of conditions gusting to 39 miles per hour. That's where the tropical storm force winds start at 39 miles per hour, go up through 73 miles per hour. So we're in now the tropical storm force wind gust as uh, Delta is basically making landfall. Don't get caught up on just where that center, that's the center of the eye. We have weather. That weather is making landfall all ahead of that center, uh, which will continue to devastate this area, which also had kind of a glancing blow from Laura a couple of weeks ago. Well, let's go to the area definitely hard hit directly from Hurricane Laura. That's Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's where my colleague uh, Tevin Wooten is uh, this afternoon. And uh, Tevin, you too have another six to seven hours of pretty intense weather to go through. But the concern is what's already been damaged and destroyed from uh, Hurricane Laura, it perhaps be lifted up in these strong gusty winds and create more damage as Delta continues to come through this afternoon. Uh, yeah, Paul, we are uh, here in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. We're actually at the Golden Nugget Casino Resort. So you may remember back uh, in late August, uh, we were out here broadcasting in the middle of Hurricane uh, Laura in this exact spot. So what happened was we sort of had a shift in the wind direction. So a lot of that debris, of course, did come through. We had glass fall down. I do want to let you know uh, today that we are safe. The, uh, the resort property has sort of made some upgrades and sort of cleaned everything up. But they've done that here, however, Homeowners, though, they are still in the process of cleaning up. So there's a lot of debris strewn about streets and sidewalks, uh, power lines in some spots of uh, Lake Charles and also uh, Cameron Parish are still down. Of course, trees are down in a lot of places, too. So it's really a, a tough blow to a lot of folks. I want to show you uh, right now sort of our eyes on the ground. Uh, Charles Peak is actually roaming about and showing us different areas and different parts and communities of Lake Charles. And what you really get a sense of is how many tarps are on all of the roofs here. I mean, there is not a single neighborhood in Lake Charles that remains untouched from Lorem. And now you mean to tell me we have another potent or a stout hurricane by the name of Delta coming through? Imagine that conversation with, uh, with residents here in Lake Charles. Uh, just uh, yesterday, they were actually evacuating and trying to get out, and they were going west uh, on I-10 and I-210 in standstill traffic. I must admit, uh, some of the highest spirits and some of the most, uh, uh, I would say, not really happy, but overall in a good mood uh, for folks considering they're going through this for almost a second time. And of course, Carl, when you think about it, for the folks that lost a lot, now they may lose even more of what they have left. A very tough blow here in Lake Charles. Carl. Yeah, Tevin, uh, just uh, emotionally exhausting, that's for sure. Our hearts going out to the people of uh, Lake Charles and Southwest Louisiana. And we're watching now the core of the storm closing in on Southwest Louisiana. Let's show you on the radar what it looks like. It is not far away at all. That northern eye wall is intact, even as we're not seeing much weather on the south side of the eye wall. Some drier air has been wrapping in. And the motion now north northeast at 14. 14 miles per hour, so that northern eye wall probably now less than two hours away from moving into places such as Holly Beach and Cameron Creole and also Grand Chenier. And those areas are going to be in for some exceptionally strong wind in short order here. Those are the winds aloft as seen by Doppler radar, so easily winds uh, gusting over 90 miles per hour. And that is piling up the water as well. Storm surge is going to be an enormous threat in those coastal areas. Also, flash flood warnings. There's one in effect now for Lake Charles. We expect to see quite a bit of heavy rain going forward in central Louisiana, in particular up towards Alexandria and the Mississippi River. And that's where there is going to be a threat for flash flooding continuing into tomorrow morning. On top of that, there is concern about the possibility of some tornadoes. There you see the low level wind shear in southeast Louisiana. Torcon is three out of 10 in New Orleans. Uh, we leave you now with a live picture in Lake Charles and look at the tarps blowing in the wind. 
The Lab, brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Daily dose of everything weather. Wow! Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. I'm terrified. Even thunderstorms scare me. I'm terrified. But we came to the conclusion as a family that nobody gets left behind. So we're not leaving them. It's a tough decision, but we're doing it. Welcome back to the Weather Channel. Live pictures from our storm tracker, Charles Peak of yeah, Lake Charles, Louisiana, and almost, I'd say the majority of homes in the area have some type of roof damage, hence the blue tarps. These blue tarps now being tested by yet another hurricane coming through. Laura was the first hurricane which caused this damage, and now Delta is coming in about six weeks later to do even more damage across uh, this area of southwestern Louisiana. It's, uh, it's, it, it, Yes, it's unfathomable to have yet another hurricane impact almost the exact same area that it did just a weeks ago. Welcome back to our coverage here all day long here. I'm meteorologist Paul Grither live in Jennings, Louisiana. We're about, say, uh, 45 miles east of Lake Charles, about, uh, say, 40 miles uh, to the west of uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. All these cities will be impacted as we have throughout, or I should say, will continue to be impacted as we have throughout the day. We've been dealing with some uh, tropical storm force wind gusts and also plenty of heavy rain that's coming on through. We had some bands of pretty heavy rain coming through as well. You can even see at times the wind whipping the rain off the roof of the building. So flooding is also a concern. Yes, storm surge flooding, definitely a concern because all this rainwater, it feeds into the bayous and the bayous eventually drain into the Gulf. But when the surge is coming in with Delta, it's going to prevent the bayous from clearly kind of evacuating that water out, this, this rain out. So it's going to back up the bayous, the bayous to fill up and also cause some flooding, not to mention street flooding and even the grassy areas now, like this uh, grass that I'm walking on through now, is getting very soggy. You see the big drainage ditch, that's getting heavier and heavier, but even other puddles are getting heavier and heavier. You can probably see this water splashing up around my boots here. The ground is saturated. The rain started last night, more light, but it's been raining all morning long, and it continues to rain heavily now in the afternoon, as we still have about five to six hours of pretty intense weather coming on through here as we head on through that northern section of Hurricane Delta. Strong winds, perhaps even gusting 70, 80 plus miles per hour also expected here, which will be due a number to these power lines here. Right now, about 12,000 customers statewide here in Louisiana without power. Look for that number to increase. And again, customers, that's a sneaky way of saying perhaps a lot of people. A customer is a billing point. So perhaps a house where you have a family of four. Yeah, that's not just four customers. That's one custom, one billing location. So easily now we're probably dealing with maybe uh, 50,000 people without power. But many of them lost power weeks ago with Hurricane Laura. Well, let's take you to pretty much ground zero uh, with Laura's impacts weeks ago to Lake Charles, Louisiana. Also getting hit hard right now. That's where Tevin Wooten is. And again, Tevin, you were there weeks ago. Uh, how does this weather compare to what you were dealing with when Laura was making its uh, bu push on shore? Uh, Paul, Paul uh, I will say it's markedly, di markedly different to uh, what we're seeing today compared to late August when we were dealing with Laura. Of course, Laura was an intensifying Category 4 storm when it made landfall. Uh, Delta, however, sort of the opposite. It's a Category 2 and potentially weakening as we go throughout the evening hours and its landfall. So you do have those two or sort of that juxtaposition. However, this is still something that a lot of residents here in Lake Charles do not want, and they certainly do not need it. Heavy rainfall and relentless winds will continue to pound this region as we go throughout the day today. Uh, you can see the radar loop right there, some of the strongest winds and some of the strongest uh, rain actually on the northern side and the western side. So even though we're not getting the eye of the storm, we're not in the dead center of the path, I almost think it's worse because there's no southern side to this storm. There is a complete western side. So guess what? The entire counterclockwise spin will continue to bring all that rain and wind from the north and northeast. So overall, as we get uh, ready to go to uh, Mike Seidel, we're still not out of the woods just yet, as, say, Cameron and uh, portions of Grand Chenier will be first. 
and then it will likely be overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning before this rain is done. All right, let's go to uh, Scott, and that's where we find Mike Seidel. He's to our east, a little bit closer towards perhaps, uh, Mike, where maybe we might see the center of the storm pass by. What are the conditions like where you are? Hey, Tevin, good afternoon from Scott. The rain has backed off for now. You can see on the radar there's a, a bit of a break in the action, but more tropical bands coming in. We've had about an inch of rain. You can see what happens in this parking lot. It fills up pretty quickly. Here comes another shower and squall in. Just as I said, the rain was backing off. So we got four or five inches of water here. I-90 ponding out on the highway. Uh, not a whole lot of wind right now. Not a whole lot of wind right now. Um, this is, by the way, I-10, I-10. Not I-90, we're not in Montana, I-10. Um, the wind right now is gusting 20 to 25 miles an hour. We expect gusts later on as high as 50 or 60 here. The concern, power outages right here in the Lafayette area. When Starbucks creates your daily dose of everything weather. Wow! Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. Up, up or down? Good afternoon, welcome back to Scott, Louisiana. Meteorologist Mike Seidel, we're following the movement of Hurricane Delta. It's gonna make landfall in the next few hours along the coast, and it's gonna come in and pass between Cameron and Jennings. Jennings is about 35 miles uh, off to my west, and we're just off to the east of Lafayette, or we're just off to the west of Lafayette. Let's bring in the police chief, Chad Lazy, from here in Scott, and tell us a little bit about the status of the town right now and uh, what you're looking at in the next few hours. Things are going great for us right now. We, we're starting to see the rain, the rain bands coming through, a little bit of wind. Uh, we're very fortunate that we haven't had much uh, uh, rain in the last several weeks or days, so the grounds aren't saturated, so hopefully the trees uh, won't go down as quick with the, with the winds that are facing us uh, soon. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, a safe event. Tell us a little bit about what you went through with Laura, because you were so far uh, east of the center. Laura, we're, 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 the way it's looking right now, we're facing the same thing we had for Laura. Uh, a little bit of winds. Uh, I think we, the fastest wind we saw was 60 miles per hour, and that was a gust. Uh, we had minimal rains, and we had proper drainage, so uh, we didn't have any homes that were flooded in our city. Uh, so it was, it, was good, it was a great day. We're already seeing some uh, flooding here in the parking lot. And, you know, not, not terribly deep, but we've only had about an inch of rain, and we are under a flash flood warning here till 7 tonight. Yes. Did, um, you know, we, we are seeing some of our spots that are, that are typical for holding a little bit of water like this right here, uh, but it's going to move along very quickly. So you'll just uh, ride it out and see how things turn out later on this evening? Everyone's uh, safe, and our guys, our police and firefighters are out there making sure everybody's safe and monitoring the, uh, the wind gusts. That's our biggest problem right now that we're looking at is the winds and see what kind of damage they're going to bring us. Yeah, and uh, I can see that just about everything in town, I think except the Waffle House, is closed. Yeah, all of our businesses pretty much shut down at noon today. We had a curfew that went into effect at, at uh, 4 o'clock today in Lafayette Parish, so uh, our businesses respected that part and closed down at noon. Okay, Chief uh, Chad Lazay from the Police Department here in Scott, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. We'll hopefully get through this okay. Again, the concern here is wind and power outages. Uh, there will be some rain. Again, the flash flood warning goes until 7. We've already had 1 to 2 inches of rain in the area. We could see another 1 to 2 inches. Still think that the heaviest rainfall totals, the, the 6 to 10, are going to stay um, off to our west, towards Jennings and towards Lafayette. Uh, that's not to say we may not get a few more inches of rain. You can see what happens when it collects here in the parking lot when you get about an inch of rain in one hour. Peak gusts so far, 32 miles an hour. We could get gusts here 50 or 60 miles an hour. And as the chief just said, they had a 60 mile an hour gust with LAR and they had minimal impact as far as trees coming down and power outages. And we talked to the locals yesterday and the power was out. One, one gentleman said six hours, some of the people said 24 hours. So it was, it was a lot better here by, by far uh, than Lake Charles. Let's go back to Atlanta, Jackie Jarris, as we uh, track the center. It's uh, closing in on the coast. Yeah. Fortunately, it's not a Cat 4 like Laura, it's down to a Cat 2 and it continues to slowly weaken, not to take away the impacts we're going to feel nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of shear on the western side of that storm, Mike. But this is going to keep going, you know, well inland. So it's not just a Louisiana storm. This is going to work its way through parts of the Mississippi Valley, the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic. Even New York City uh, may get some rain from a cold front combined with some moisture here from Delta. So let's take a look at a place like Nashville, Tennessee. We're expecting to see one to two inches of rainfall widespread. You could get some locally heavier amounts than this. 
especially off to your south and west. And Nashville may see some wind gusts on the 20 to 30 mile per hour range. I do think off to your west and Memphis will get hit a little bit harder with heavier downpours and stronger winds in Greenville, Mississippi, uh, getting some strong wind gusts. In fact, the latest model showing the center of Delta likely moving right over very near Greenville. So bringing those strong winds and heavy downpours. And this will continue uh, even into your Sunday where we're expecting to have those winds still around 15 to 20 miles per hour. So it's going to take a while to wind down quite a bit. Now the rainfall totals, because it's moving so quickly, will likely be heaviest just near landfall and to the right of landfall. But we still could see some really significant amounts, especially into the central and southern southern parts of the Appalachians. You get a little terrain in there, you put in the tropical moisture, and that can really enhance the rainfall. So totals in this area, northern Georgia through the western Carolinas, even to parts of Virginia, could reach three to five inches of rainfall. And that will likely cause some flash flooding in spots. So big heads up up on that and then into the mid-Atlantic uh, you could still see an inch or two of rain. Flash flood watches right now happen to be in effect from Louisiana through parts of Arkansas, uh, northern parts of Mississippi including you and Tupelo and on up towards Memphis. Uh, the watches may have to be get extended with time as a result as that rain continues to push off towards the east. So the forecast for tomorrow continues to be bringing rain across northern Louisiana all across parts of the deep south. As we head into Sunday the Tennessee and Ohio River Valley could see one to three inches of rainfall. Sunday into Monday, then the focus turns into the mid-Atlantic and into the northeast. I might want to mention we could see some strong to severe thunderstorms this weekend in the northeast, too, as that cold front approaches across the weekend. Uh, we do think the I-95 corridor is going to be very difficult for travelers on your Monday, and there will likely be a lot of slowdowns. So forecast for a place like Charlotte, just the clouds we think for tonight. The light rain begins to push in, but it's going to be really late Saturday and into Sunday when you're going to see the most intense showers and thunderstorms the Monday tapering off with a few showers in New York City. This is Sunday night and Monday for you. Your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. We're looking live at Lake Charles, Louisiana. We were hit six weeks ago with Hurricane Laura. Now we're getting hit with Hurricane Delta. These pictures courtesy of our storm trucker, Charles Peak, who's out and about. And every now and then you see piles of debris because the cleanup still has not been completed here because you had a major hurricane run through here and now we're dealing with yet another hurricane. So and now perhaps another cleanup is just perhaps about a day or so uh, from beginning because of Hurricane Delta. Welcome back to our uh, day long and night long coverage of the uh, uh, landfall of Hurricane Delta. I'm meteorologist Paul Agritho live in Jennings, Louisiana. We are about say 45 miles east of Lake Charles and about say 40 miles to the west of uh, Lafayette here. And we are gonna be pretty much in the eye of Hurricane Delta as it makes landfall over the next several hours. So the good news is the backside of Delta doesn't look that intense. The bad news is the front side does, and that's what we're in right now. So for the next basically uh, four and a half to five hours, we have intensifying rain and wind we have to get through before we get to the eye of the Delta. Then some calm, then uh, some brief chaos on the backside, but the, uh, the, the amount of weather on the backside of the eye, not nearly as intense as what we're dealing with right now. 
but it's not just here. Let's go live on the ground to my colleague uh, Tevin Wooten. He is in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And uh, Tevin, looking at the wind gusts, we're gusting 39 miles per hour here in Jennings. You guys are gusting now 45 miles per hour. Yeah, yeah, Paul, we've had a gust near 45 miles an hour just about two or three minutes ago. I actually think we got a gust near 50, so we'll wait to see what the observations say. Some of the strongest gusts thus far today, though, 60 miles per hour. Keep in mind, the strongest part of Delta is still about 60 to 80 miles offshore. So as the storm inches closer and closer towards the northern Gulf Coast and southern Louisiana, we'll certainly anticipate the winds picking up more. And this... To continue the moderate to heavy rainfall keep in mind for many of the residents here in lake charles they've had to tarp off their roofs because just six weeks ago we were dealing with laura and now we've got a storm by the name of delta uh, bringing in sort of that insult to injury or double whammy if you will speaking of whammy the winds are blowing in from the north or northeast at times and so we're getting that occasional shift and all of the rain is of course being guided at that so it's almost that horizontal rain that we're seeing come in with the wind right now I do anticipate, again, the winds to pick up between 50 and 60 miles per hour in the next hour to two hours, and then beyond that, closer to 6 p.m. or 8 p.m., perhaps 60 to 80 mile per hour gusts, sustained winds, of course, tropical storm force, if not greater. So you're talking about 39 to 73 miles per hour. The other thing that we have going for us, the heavy rainfall so far, we picked up nearly an inch of rain in the last, uh, I would say, six to seven hours. But here's the thing, about a half of that came in just one hour's time. So not only are you talking about the wind, not only are you talking about the wind-driven rain, but you're also talking about a flash flood threat as well. So a multitude or a myriad of factors to watch with Delta as it continues to bring relentless conditions here to Calcasieu Parish in southwestern Louisiana. Let's go into uh, Carl Parker now with expert analysis because, Carl, when this thing uh, makes landfall, it doesn't just stop. It continues to move inland. And the other thing that I'm very impressed with is we've sort of seen the engine shut down, but as you shut down your car, there are a couple of other parts that still have to, you know, leak out some water or shut down too, and the fans have to turn off as well. So this thing doesn't just stop all of a sudden. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of uh, what we call inertial stability, a lot of momentum that is built up, but the wind shear is certainly having an impact right now. I want you to notice how the cloud on the north side there in Louisiana and Mississippi is moving out to the northeast. That is the wind shear. That's important. There you see the core of the storm just about ready to move into southwest Louisiana. Uh, winds now gusting over 50 miles per hour in many locations. But I want to show you the radar picture because this is interesting. If you look over the last couple of hours, you can see that tighter eye wall right there and in just the last couple of frames notice how the northeastern part of the eye wall is beginning to move more out to the northeast relative to the center and so that means the entire storm is becoming less vertically stacked we're starting to see more of those stronger storms being blown off to the northeast by that stronger wind shear that's actually starting to separate that core a little bit and so that's important that's going to help us out we're going to see some exceptional strong wind coming into Pecan Island here as well as a Grand Chenier and in Lake Charles a really close call Jackie I think they could get into that northwestern eye wall yeah. but it's going to be a very close shave those winds are really increasing for sure Carl and they're causing an increased number of power outages across the state of Texas we're now up to almost 17,000 uh, that's more than double just in the last hour and then in Louisiana we're now also almost up to 17,000 a lot of them in Calcasieu Parish about half of them that was from Laura but now we're starting to see those numbers beginning to increase so we just really want to remind folks as power outages are going to become more likely and more widespread with time. They may go all the way up to a place like Memphis just to use a lot of caution and be very careful. Use good practices with generators and make sure they're ventilated and outdoors. Did you know the takeaway here is it's still just a dangerous storm, not just the wind speed, but the size. The bigger the storm, the more the storm surge, and the bigger the wind field, more people will feel the impacts of that wind. And here we go again for yet another time here in this Atlantic hurricane season of 2020. We're dealing with a landfall of a hurricane. Good news is this is no longer a major hurricane, but still a Category 2 Hurricane Delta is making landfall as we speak. It's still another hour or two before that uh, 
center, the eye wall comes on shore, but the weather is coming on shore, making landfall as we speak. I'm meteorologist Paul Gerdo, live in Jennings, Louisiana, and we'll be dealing with the tropical storm force wind gusts so far this afternoon. They're increasing, so are our rain rates and intensity. We're under a flash flood warning, already picked up two to three inches of rain, and it's raining heavily now. That's been increasing over the last uh, a half hour or so. And by the way, already uh, across the state, closing in on 17,000 customers without power. A lot of them because of the gusty winds here. The winds not only strong and damaging here, but also even in areas of East Texas, Beaumont, Port Arthur, even Galveston. Winds have been gusting well over 50 miles per hour there, and they're 100 miles away from the center. We are about 60 miles away from that northern eye wall of uh, Hurricane Delta. The projected path should take it within 10 to 12 miles of where we're speaking, and, and we're on the east side. So we do expect our winds and rains to really increase over the next four to five hours. Again, 60 miles away from that northern eye wall. The storm's moving now at 14 miles per hour. We're talking just over four hours of more of this, except more intense rain and definitely stronger winds on the way in here uh, to Jennings. But it's not just Jennings. To the west, we have Lake Charles, devastated by uh, Hurricane Laura. They're getting this as well. And to the east, we have Lafayette, as well as the uh, town of uh, Bro Bridge, uh, Louisiana, where our Jim Cantori is right now. And Jim, talk about the weather you've been dealing with there this afternoon. Yeah, Paul, just lots of heavy rain. Uh, you know, so the bodies are filling up pretty quickly here, but that's what they're for. They take the water out and bring it down toward the Gulf of Mexico. That's gonna be harder and harder to do as the storm surge continues to increase, all right? Already getting a lot of word down there uh, along the coastline of the storm surge, the water coming up, that will continue to be the case, all right? So if you haven't gotten out of that area yet, before you get trapped, that's exactly what we need you to do. Again, this is downtown Bro Ridge. This is Bro Bridge. This is the center of town right through here. Uh, some people have boarded up, but frankly, not many. I'm gonna say about 90% of the buildings have not. You can see the glass in the rear. A lot of what I see is in the term of sandbags. You can see sandbags up toward the door. Should we get into enough heavy rain uh, that that comes up? So what are we going to deal with here? You know, certainly 70, maybe 90 mile per hour gusts uh, by time it gets up this way. You can see some of these, uh, you know, planters that are hanging up there. That'll be fun, uh, certainly for them. Look at the glass building just down the road there. There's nothing boarded up on that. So, you know, that's kind of open to whatever, uh, happens as a result of this storm. So Laura, not a lot of boarding up with that either from what we understand. So people are just kind of taking their chances and some of the local businesses actually did lose some glass in through here. But already again, getting 60 mile per hour gusts uh, in Lake Charles. And when you think of the thousands and thousands of tarps uh, that are on those roofs, roofs that without COVID would have likely been more repaired at this point, okay? You stop making roof shingles, you can't put roofs on. And that's the problem in through here. This COVID is certainly having a ripple effect in so many areas, and this is another one, all right? Let's go down to Scott, Louisiana. About, so no, I think you're about 15 miles to my uh, southwest or so. You'll get, you know, it'll be interesting to watch you because what you get is gonna be coming this way. Exactly, and I can tell you what we're getting right now, Jim, uh, another squall coming in. We've seen this on the radar. Uh, we've gusted to 32 miles an hour. Again, we're not in, in the wind. It's gonna cause any problems yet, but that's coming in the next three to four hours, and some very heavy rain. We've had about an inch of rain so far, and you can see the parking lot. Let's bring in the uh, fire chief here in beautiful yeah. Scott, Louisiana, Chad Sonier. Uh, thanks for joining us, Chief. Let's talk about uh, what's in store for you. We talked to the police chief earlier. Uh, talk about the, the water, the wind, potential search and rescue. Our main issue is gonna be, obviously, this is gonna be a water and wind issue. Uh, we have boats strategically placed throughout the city, not only in Scott, but in the parish. And we also have urban search and rescue teams in this area, as well as 30 to 40 miles outside of the area. In case it gets hit a little worse than we expected, they can come in and assist us. And give me an overview of low-lying areas around here, because you're not, on a, you're, not, you're not on a major tributary like the Atchafalaya River. There's not a lot of water right here in town. Correct. We have a lot of low-lying areas, which... Uh, we're familiar with them flooding on a regular basis, so we strategically place our equipment around there to get to our victims quicker. And what did you see with Laura with 60 mile an hour wind gusts from your perspective? Because that may be about what we get with this, 60, 70 mile an hour wind gusts, maybe very uh, compatible. We had a couple of houses uh, where a tree fell on them, a tree fell on a house and we had to go in and get the people out. We had a people with a couple of flooding issues where we had to go get them with the boats and bring them to higher ground. 
uh, just in typical rain and wind issues. Okay, we're gonna let you go and um, be safe out there. Hopefully we'll get through this with no major issues. And you've got your guys, uh, they're, they're on around the clock right now. Correct. Okay, Chief Chad Sonia here in Scott, Louisiana. Tevin Wooden, we, uh, we've got another squall coming through right now, some heavier rainfall. We still haven't had any of those, you know, really gnarly wind gusts of 50 or 60 miles an hour, but I'm sure they're coming. And they're obviously, you've yeah. already had a gust in Lake oh. Charles at 60 miles an hour. Tell me what you've seen over the, say, the past hour as far as the weather going downhill. Uh, yeah, Mike, we've had that gust at 60 miles an hour, sustained winds in the 30s, perhaps uh, gusts right now near 45 or 55 miles an hour. Here's the problem. The core of the strongest winds are still just two hours south. So as the storm works its way, charges its way towards the north, Delta brings winds in, slashing portions of southern Louisiana, and unfortunately right here in Lake Charles and other portions of Calcasieu Parish, such as Moss Bluff and areas towards the south near Cameron, too. A lot of the winds right now are from the north. Overall, that northerly direction will hold perhaps a deviation towards the north and east. Uh, but look at uh, the secondary shot or whatever is on the right-hand side of your screen here. It's a lot of trash. Here's the problem. That trash actually came from Laura in late August. So when Laura came through, Category 4 hurricane, absolutely devastating. 140 to 150 mile an hour winds in some spots with this storm. So what's going to happen today in the remaining hours as we go throughout the evening hours today is any sort of debris, perhaps not necessarily those piles of debris, but any loose limbs that weren't brought down or any shingles that are still uh, loose on folks' homes, that'll become a projectile potentially as the core of those strongest winds work their way through. So I don't think, we're, even though we're not necessarily getting the eye of the storm, the point I want to drive home is you don't need the eye of the storm. Sometimes uh, outside of the eye can be the worst part. And I actually think that's what we're seeing in terms of the winds to the north. Yes, overall, that will hold as this system holds. But even to the west, it's just a different direction. That's the only difference with this storm compared to what we saw with Laura, where we pretty much took a direct hit. Now it's not going to be a direct hit, but it will still be a hit nonetheless, and a hit that a lot of folks here in Lake Charles do not want, nor do they need. So we'll go throughout the day today. Visibility has already been reduced to about three quarters of a, uh, a mile, uh, Carl. And then the rain, rainfall rates right now near half an inch at times. So we've got the heavy rain, we've got the strong winds, and unfortunately the winds will get stronger as we go throughout the day today. Uh, as we go throughout tonight and tomorrow, what happens to the intensity of Delta? Well, Tevin, it's uh, definitely on its way down. And in fact, we're seeing some real changes to the internal structure of the storm right now. We got the latest advisory from the Hurricane Center, now 105 mile per hour storm, category two. And the pressure is the same and the movement is the same north, northeast at 14 miles per hour. You can see the big bursting of thunderstorms now coming into the coast. But I want you to notice how the clouds across northern Louisiana and into Mississippi are rapidly moving away to the northeast. That is the strong wind along that is now beginning to affect the system. And when you look at the radar picture here, you can see where the eye has been. Take a look at that northeastern eye wall. That has actually been sort of blown to the northeast relative to that core. So the entire internal structure of the storm is not as organized now. It's starting to tilt because of that stronger wind that's coming in. So this is all, these are all good signs as it's not as organized, but we do have a, a tremendous band, that band that's being blown off to the northeast that is the eye wall that is coming up towards Pecan Island right now and maybe towards Lafayette as well. And it's going to be a really close call there in Lake Charles. Uh, already winds now gusting to 50 miles per hour. That eye wall is probably going to be really close to you. We're getting a surge of uh, three, four to five feet right along the coast there. And looking at the model forecast going forward, we expect that that uh, area of very strong winds will come up through Lake Charles over the next several hours here and uh, points in between Lake Charles and Lafayette, including including Jennings, and that's where we find our Paul Goodlow. So, Paul, a uh, very long night tonight. The storm is at least moving along, but because it is large and because it is powerful, it's going to be an exceptionally long night there. As you mentioned, Carl, the eye is kind of expanding. It's getting closer even faster to this area. So we have a lot of intense uh, weather we have to go through. The rain has been picking up here. So have the winds. Even the last uh, 10 minutes or so, we're still seeing the, way, the wind kind of driving uh, that rain right off even the roof of this building here and across the area. We are seeing 
the wind direction changed just a little bit, a little bit more of an easterly direction of these winds here. Another sign that that eye is getting closer to this area. We're still about an hour or maybe even two and a half before it actually hits the coast. The center does, but we still have a lot of weather we have to go through. And yeah, more heavy rain and more strong winds. Having winds gusting 70, even 90 miles per hour, not out of the question here. So we could still see a lot of wind damage here, let alone the power outages continue to grow. That's going to be something we're going to see widespread across this area. The town of Jennings and, uh, is under a curfew, so they don't want people out. The good news is we have barely seen anyone that's not a first responder on the streets, which is great news because as the winds increase, you can see all types of things being blown around here. You have to remember this area also hit by Hurricane Laura, not nearly as intense as, uh, say, Lake Charles was, but they had tree damage and homes were damaged and people even lost their homes here and uh, roof damage as well. So uh, they still have weakened structures and they're still trying to, to clean up from that as well. So we're definitely concerned with more intense impacts still on the way throughout the evening. So basically uh, the weather has been going downhill since we've been down here, out here, and it will continue to do so throughout the rest of the afternoon before things improve, but that won't be closer to the midnight and beyond hour. Yeah, probably some sunshine tomorrow, but you still have to hunker down and get through the rest of today. Again, in this wild, crazy season, this yeah. hurricane season of 2020, on top of everything else we have to deal with, still dealing with COVID and an ongoing, very active, above average hurricane season. It Let's go back to the lot. studio, check in uh, with, with Jackie, because you're still also uh, watching a lot of things going yeah. on here uh, all across Louisiana with impacts with Hurricane Delta. Yeah, and other states as well, including Texas. We've got about 40,000 customers now without power in Louisiana and Texas combined. Utility company Entergy says that they're ready, though, and they're going to be mobilizing nearly 10,000 workers in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas to restore power back. About eight 8.4 million people live in the National Hurricane Center's forecast cone for Delta, and impacts will be felt far inland. Our Charles Peak is joining us live now on the phone from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And Charles, we know that winds have been gusting as much as 60 miles per hour here. Uh, the city hit so hard by Laura. We spoke with the mayor earlier today. He said about 95% of homes have been compromised and or have blue tarps on top of them. There we see the debris in your shot right there. I mean, what is 60 mile an hour winds doing to all that debris? Right now, most of the debris piles that I've seen uh, haven't been impacted too much. Uh, you get some sheet metal, uh, those kinds of things that are easier to blow have come out and some smaller items. But uh, needless to say, we're not to the worst part of the winds yet. Uh, blue tarps are starting to come off some of the houses. Uh, mm. But uh, right now, some of the roads are starting to have minor street flooding with the moderate to heavy rainfall as well. Yeah, I saw some video that you um, had shot on social media, I think on Twitter earlier, showing the blue tarps. And, you know, some of them were staying on the homes, but they're flapping in the wind. So that allows all the rain to go inside of homes that might be okay on the inside. And all of a sudden, unfortunately, they're going to be damaged because of this. Yeah, and, and there's just so many, um, almost every house, and I think you just said 95%. I mean, there's just so much destruction down here. My my heart just really goes out to yeah. the people that are having to face it a second time. So mandatory evacuation orders have been put in place there in Calcasieu Parish, including uh, Lake Charles. I mean, are you there by yourself, Charles? Did everybody leave pretty much? Uh, a lot of people did more than with Hurricane Laura, but there's still people, believe it or not, driving around out on the roads and uh, – uh, out and around a little. That's tough. I know evacuation uh, was somewhat challenging for folks because uh, the interstates really got backed up uh, during that process. Have you heard of any of those issues today? Uh, they were clearer today. Uh, yesterday it was a parking lot on uh, I-10, but today coming in uh, from the west, uh, excuse me, from the east coming into Lake Charles, uh, there weren't too many people out on the interstates. There's a few, but not too many. Charles, are you riding out the storm there or are you going to be moving on? My plan right now is to ride it out as long as I can be. When these winds pick up with all this debris 
uh, needless to say, i got to make sure I'm in a safe location. So uh, we'll play that out as things materialize in the next few hours. All right. Yeah, safety number one for sure. Stay safe, my friend. That's Charles Peake uh, reporting live for us in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So Lake Charles, a little bit inland, but certainly feeling some big impacts. Other cities will be affected here, including Lafayette, Louisiana. The strongest winds will be arriving this evening, 60 plus miles per hour with several inches of rainfall expected. And this shows you the timing within that area. The northern eye wall already getting very, very close, but it is going to be a fast moving storm. So look at this. Even as we head into the over Overnight hours for tonight, we think some of that rain is going to begin to lift in. We'll still have the gusty winds, and then, of course, the cleanup begins. We'll have continuing live coverage of more crews in the field right after this. Stay with us. season doesn't stop for a pandemic and neither do we get the information you need to stay safe every day right here on the weather channel and our coverage of hurricane delta already dealing with some new video coming in of some damage this is holly beach louisiana right on the coast and you can see it looks like some uh damage to the side of that building don't know whether that uh, was Laura damage, and this is just being exposed now with Delta. But bottom line, back-to-back -back hurricanes is not a good thing, and it's definitely uh, well, threatening to compromise that building there. All right, that's the video, but live pictures right now of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Our storm tracker, Charles Peak, has come across uh, this looks like a hotel where even the, the tarp that's kind of protecting it is uh, kind of blowing here in the gusty winds. Winds have been gusting. 60 miles per hour in Lake Charles, and that's going to be only increasing as we go through the next, say, uh, four to maybe even eight hours or so as we still go through all the weather. Again, landfall of the center of Hurricane Delta is still hours away, but uh, there's plenty of weather before, during, and after landfall of that center, depending on where you are. I am in Jennings, Louisiana, which is about, say, uh, 40 miles, 45 miles to the east of Lake Charles and about uh, 45 miles west of Lafayette, Louisiana. We're also about 40 miles off the Gulf Coast, so we're just, sou just south of I-10 here. We have been dealing with gusty winds, tropical storm force wind gust. The last measured one at the airport was 39 miles per hour, and we've been dealing with gusts like that this afternoon, as well as some very heavy rain. Flash flood warning is underway, and that's because even where I'm standing, we're starting to see more and more soggy uh, grass here. You can see puddles now easily forming in this grassy areas. So even some of the side streets, areas that flood easily, are starting to flood here. There's also concern with storm surge, even here, not directly, but more indirectly, because we have bayous, which all this rainwater feeds into the bayous. That's how the area is drained. And the bayous feed to the Gulf of Mexico. But when the surge comes in, it prevents these bayous from emptying out. So while the rain goes into the bayous, the bayous start to back up because they cannot go out uh, towards the Gulf. So that's also a concern as well as the gusty winds and the rain. And yeah, a lot of power lines coming down. Our power outage numbers here statewide continue to increase uh, every single minute of landfall we have here uh, with Hurricane Delta. But it's not just here in Jennings. This is all across parts of southern Louisiana. In fact, including uh, Bro Bridge, Louisiana, where our uh, Jim Cantori is this afternoon. And Jim, you too, dealing with some pretty intense rain and increasing winds there. 
Yeah, Paul, and we just set up one of our Storm Path cameras. So, guys, just so you know, a little, little behind the scenes here, um, each one of our crews brings out another camera that we can, you know, show pictures of. It's almost like a static camera. When we set that up, we're going to show you the Bayou, Bayou Tesh, uh, which is just down for me. Uh, of course, the bridge, Bro Bridge, goes over that. And you can see how much higher that is. Oh, we got it. We got it. Okay, great. So you can see what I'm talking about. Just to, for the record, yesterday this was really low, really low, almost down to the ground. Uh, so now you've got, you know, probably what is at least a 10-foot rise uh, in that creek or that bayou, if you will, where, uh, as Paul put and said so eloquently, all that water is trying to get out of the Gulf of Mexico. All right. But the more the surge comes in, the higher that gets in, it's not going anywhere. So it'll all kind of back up. Uh, David Bernard, uh, one of our photographers out in the field, just shot some pictures, which you will see soon, of a huge, what was it, pecan tree, Dave? Yeah, a pecan limb down on the road. They're going to have to remove that. So this is really not the time to be out, guys. You know, it's going to get worse. The winds are going to come in. The whole storm's decoupling as it's coming ashore, which Carl's been talking about very well. Uh, you know, so so that, you know, the stronger winds are certainly yet to come up and through here along with these heavier rain bands. We are under a flash flood warning. We are obviously under a hurricane warning. And even though, you know, and I was thinking about this, what's a good, really good way to talk about this? Uh, even though the storm may be changing its characteristics, that doesn't mean that the hazards that the Hurricane Center, the National Weather Service, and the Weather Channel have pointed out to you are going to change. We already anticipated those changes with the system uh, atmospherically, okay? So nothing else changes. You're still going to get the surge. We're still going to get the wind. We're still going to get the rain. Uh, we've already got, let's see here, about 35,000 customers between Texas and Louisiana without power right now. So that number, those numbers are just going to go up, and we're going to see more and more flash flood warnings. All right, Tevin Wooten, like Charles. Uh, you, in my opinion, are in the number one story here because of the bait, beaten down area and the fact that we have so many roofs that are incomplete because of lack of shingles, roof shingles here. Uh, let's talk about this. We've already had about a 60 mile per hour gust. I don't know where you're standing. I can't see yep. your shot, but is yep. there any, you know, have we lost tarps yet at this point? Because you're going to lose tarps with 60 mile an hour uh, winds. I haven't seen any tarps go here, but uh, Charles Peak has been driving around. We've seen some of the tarps starting to kind of jostle around. And look at how many there are. This is an area or a city that about 90 to 95% of the city in some shape, form, or fashion has suffered some sort of damage. Uh, and now we're dealing with uh, Delta. This was, uh, of course, uh, all that, all those tarps were put on after Laura, which was a Category 4 hurricane. And now I'm going to take you out towards the sky. This is facing towards uh, the Calcasieu River here that connects to the port of Lake Charles. Look at the visibility that's been reduced down to about three quarters of a mile. This is still a very strong and dangerous storm, and we're tracking it for you all across the northern Gulf Coast. If people decide to stay, okay, during a, a weather event like this, there are particular times that emergency vehicles cannot respond. So if you're talking about the winds get above, you know, 70 mile per hour, then it's unsafe even for emergency responders vehicles. And the wind's now getting into that tropical storm force wind gust area again, 39 miles per hour and stronger. And we're going to see them perhaps even getting to hurricane force wind gust over the next couple of hours as uh, Hurricane Delta continues its push on shore. Don't get caught up in where the center is and what time that makes landfall. Get caught up in that weather, which only continues to go downhill across much of southern Louisiana for the next four to maybe even eight hours or so. I'm meteorologist Paul Gertho, live in Jennings, Louisiana. We're about 40 miles north of the Gulf and about, say, 45 miles uh, to the east of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and about, say, 40 miles to the west of Lafayette. So uh, this area also impacted by Hurricane Laura about six weeks or so ago. Uh, tree damage, power, people lost power here. They've, you know, somewhat recovered, not nearly as well as well, we, well, we recovered better than, say, neighbors to the west out towards Lake Charles. So they got direct hit uh, with Hurricane Laura, although we're most likely going to get a direct hit from Hurricane Delta. It's been raining here since about uh, nonstop since about 7 o'clock this morning, and the winds have been steadily increasing throughout this afternoon. We are still about, say, uh, four or five hours worth of weather away from that northern eye wall of the center of uh, Hurricane Delta. Then we'll probably get into the actual eye, the center of the storm, and then eventually on the backside, a shorter amount of weather coming on through there. So we have a long way to go here 
as we're dealing with some of the strongest wind gusts uh, coming through here. Even taking a look at the building next to me, you can really see how the wind drives that rain. Our wind has been shifting from the northeast to the kind of east-northeast, more easterly direction as that center continues to get closer to this area. We do expect that wind to continue to shift. But once it moves on towards the south, that's a good sign. That means we're past the center and we're starting to see the beginning of the end of the weather impact, at least this area here. We have similar uh, weather conditions going on west of here. In fact, they've been gusting at times to 60 miles per hour in Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's where our uh, Tevin Wooten is right now. And Tevin, you were there uh, during Laura. So people have definitely have to be on edge knowing another hurricane is coming to the area. Yeah, uh, folks here are certainly on edge. Also, Paul, a lot of folks got the heck out of harm's way. Hey, a lot of people, a lot of people actually did go towards uh, Houston or Galveston or Dallas, Texas yesterday. In fact, I don't know if we have the video, but the interstate was jam-packed with people near gridlock conditions at times. I mean, you walk out, and, and we were interviewing some folks as they were driving by, and they were in the brightest of moods and the happiest of spirits, which is sort of uh, you would think they would be worse off or mad, but they weren't upset about the situation, and that just speaks to the spirit of the folks here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Let's speak to the weather right now in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Conditions continue to go downhill, and unfortunately, power outages are climbing as conditions are going downhill. We've got about 70, or excuse me, 19,000 people without power. A majority of those are in southwestern Louisiana between Calcasieu and Cameron Parishes. The rain's also blowing in horizontal at times. I think the strongest gust near 60 is, uh, still stands, but perhaps as we go throughout the evening hours, that will get stronger. Look at that speck of red or that blob of red coming in on the northern side of the eye. That's actually some of the strongest rainfall returns that we're seeing, or rainfall rates, but also the stronger winds, too, are near the core of this storm. So as this moves north, we actually see that clock counterclockwise flow that brings it in from the north and east. So overall, that does bring some of the stronger winds of Delta right here into Lake Charles and other portions of Calcasieu Parish, such as Moss Bluff and southbound as well into Cameron and eventually uh, Grand Chenier, where, uh, Jim, I think maybe perhaps landfall somewhere near Grand Chenier or Mud Lake. That remains to be seen. Uh, overall, it doesn't take the eye or the uh, landfall to get the worst of conditions. Right, and you know what? Now we've got storm surge issues. All right, let's shake, take you to Abbeville. And this is it. Now we're, we're maximizing the storm surge with the storm coming ashore uh, in that eye wall, especially on the east side of it and the northern side of it. So get ready for that, guys. It's coming up and it's coming up fast uh, in a lot of these areas. So hopefully you heeded the evacuation orders. Just because the storm is starting to change atmospherically, again, as I mentioned, that doesn't mean the issues that were already forecast uh, are going to drop off like, like that. They're not because these type of things were already taken into account when these forecasts were made, okay? So keep that in mind, stay out of the water. You can see the water coming up uh, again in Abbeville pretty quick. And if you've ever been down in Southern Louisiana on some of these parishes uh, along the Gulf, you know that you may be okay on one section of road, but all of a sudden you drive up, oh, there's a flood. You turn around and go out the other way, up, oh, there's a flood. And as quick as it comes up, uh, now you're kind of trapped out there and the water comes up around you and you wind up in it. So hopefully he's, uh, hopefully nobody's down there. Again, guys, uh, Delta coming ashore uh, as we speak in through here, heavy rain, storm surge, and power outages as we speak. When Starbucks cream gets your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. Welcome back to the Weather Channel. Meteorologist Paul Gerthel live in Jennings, Louisiana. The rain has been intensifying, and so has the wind as of late. So we're talking about wind gusts uh, nearly, uh, 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 bare minimum, is 39 miles per hour. We've been dealing with that for a couple hours, getting even stronger now. The uh, airport here in Jennings just not reporting the wind uh, measurements every hour, though. But we are measuring pressure. That's decreasing as Hurricane Delta continues to come closer. We're about, say, four hours of weather away uh, from a brief respite as the eye comes over here. Again, the National Hurricane Center's forecast brings the center of the eye about 12 miles uh, due west of us around the town of Welsh, Louisiana, which puts us into that eye as it kind of moves towards the northeast. And our winds now are shifting from the northeast to east-northeast and even easterly winds. 
still driving this rain. You can even see at times kind of driving that rain off the roof of the building here. Power outages are increasing across Louisiana, including here. That's one of the, the widespread things we're concerned about is people losing power and losing all our creature comforts we're used to, like air conditioning, like uh, TV, like even Internet, even cell service uh, could be going out as we have throughout the rest of the day. The good news is as our winds and weather is increasing, it should still be during a good chunk of the daylight hours here. And so when things do perhaps break loose, you might see what they are uh, as the daylight hours come up. But we're still going to have this uh, kind of bad weather continue even as the sun sets just before 7 o'clock local time. But once we head past midnight and beyond, our weather should be improving. In fact, daybreak tomorrow, we'll probably see some sun and the rain should be moving on out of here. In fact, if not the entire uh, center of Delta moving out of the state of Louisiana and it couldn't come any time too soon because we do need a respite and more time to recover now after another hurricane is making landfall in this state. We're also dealing with uh, widespread issues, even in parts of East Texas. I want to go back to the studio now and uh, call Parker. Even places like Beaumont, Port Arthur, even Galveston, we're talking miles away from the center of uh, Delta. We're dealing with tropical storm, uh, close to hurricane force wind gusts there. Yeah, that's right. Winds have been gusting as high as 60 miles per hour in Galveston for several hours now. And I want to show you what's going on on the radar picture. We're starting to really see the influence of wind shear now as that northeastern eye wall is being blown away away from the low level center and what that means is this area of very strong wind is accelerating moving even faster than the speed of the storm and now rapidly moving into some more populated areas in Louisiana. So you see this area right in here these very strong thunderstorms right there. That's where we're going to see some exceptionally strong wind winds gusting 80 90 miles per hour. That is now just moments away from coming into Bell City and Lake Arthur and Gayda and Abbeville as well and it looks Looks like it is also going to clip uh, parts of Lake Charles. So some very strong wind on the way with this mid-level center that is now moving out and ahead of the low-level center. And as we look at the broader picture, you see also thunderstorms on the west side of the circulation. And we expect that uh, that area of low-level convergence will continue to fire thunderstorms. So that's going to keep Lake Charles in the rain and the wind for quite some time tonight. Winds easily gusting 60 to 75 miles per hour, maybe even even stronger than that. A lot of heavy rain on the way. And the big worry there is that as we see uh, tarps uh, on 6,000 homes in Lake Charles, we expect that there may actually be some serious water damage as those uh, those tarps are removed. And we want to go now to uh, Jim Cantori reporting uh, just northeast of Lafayette. And uh, Jim, watching that band off to your south, I think it's going to get a whole lot windier there before too long. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting, Carl, uh, with a decoupling center like this, you know, does the band kind of drift over this way, even though, you know, we, we weren't supposed to get the worst of this, obviously, being in Bro Bridge, but uh, playing that sheer card, you know, does, does is there going to be something left of that uh, by the time it gets here? It's entirely possible. And here's the deal. I mean, I was talking about this earlier. We anticipated this. All these factors meteorologically we anticipated. So the forecast that you've gotten in the areas are anticipate that is all factored in all right so that's what I, I want you guys to think about even though uh, you know certainly it looks sloppy uh, on radar and satellite presentation all right uh, again Rodney let's take everybody down to Abbeville I want to talk about this because this is the highest surge this just sits west of Vermilion Bay all right so you have uh, a southeast wind here east wind blowing the water on the western side of the bay a lot of times we talk about how the water shifts in Lake Pontchartrain depending on the wind same thing in Vermilion Bay it's a big bay the water's coming up and through there uh, over five feet 5.4 feet down in Cameron Parish we're already over four feet so as this is coming ashore now we will continue to maximize the storm surge there all right we've been in and out of the rain here but Rodney if we can call up that camera again our storm camera our storm path two uh, camera here you can see what the bayou looks like Bayou Tesh uh, this thing was literally trickling a couple of days ago and look at how high it is now it's almost to the base of the bridge so lots of water in through here we'll see how much more rain we got we certainly know we're not done we got a, at least two three hours of this and then we really start to dry out on the western and southern side of that and that's the shear this thing is getting absorbed into the mid-latitudes it is October this is a powerful jet stream and thank goodness for that but that doesn't mean we are out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. Flash flooding will ensue in a lot of these areas, and with the gusty winds, uh, we will see trees and certainly power lines come down. 30,000 customers, by the way, in Texas right now without power and counting.
Delta set to deliver a dangerous blow to portions of southwestern Louisiana. You're taking a look at uh, some of the debris uh, that is damaged here in southwestern Louisiana. This is in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Some of the buildings have been damaged. Now, it's very difficult to tell if this is from Delta, which has already brought winds near 60 miles an hour, or if this is from uh, Laura, that was six weeks ago. And that's going to be the difficult part for a, a lot of the homeowners and perhaps uh, city officials here and insurance adjusters and all those folks that have to go through and assess the damage after the fact. Was this pre-Delta uh, or was this post-Delta? Welcome back into the Weather Channel and continuing coverage of Hurricane Delta. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten, live from Lake Charles, Louisiana, where we've already seen, again, winds are 60 miles an hour. That wind-driven rain continues to rage on here in Delta, not done just yet by any stretch of the imagination. And in fact, I think we're starting to see some of the stronger wind gusts as Delta's core approaches uh, southern portions of Louisiana. Eventually, this storm kicks it in high gear, approaches northern Louisiana, portions of Tennessee, and also uh, into the Appalachians as well. I want to show you what we're seeing right now. Starting to see a lessening in the winds here, so that, uh, a lessening in the uh, rainfall. So if you go out towards uh, the Calcasieu River, that's the uh, body of water right there, typically you'd be able to see, uh, and you can sort of make out uh, some of that industrial plant that is perhaps about a mile or so away. Visibility, though, down to three quarters of a mile at times or half a mile. So that's what happens when you do get heavy gusts of wind uh, on the order of 50 to 60 miles per hour. And then the moderate to heavy rain showers that we're seeing here uh, in conjunction with Delta II. Uh, I think overall we've got much of the evening to go. Delta's not done. I would say the next six to eight hours are when you really need to hunker down. Folks shouldn't be on the roadways here. There's already an evacuation order in place here in Lake Charles, Louisiana anyway. Uh, Louisiana anyway. So a lot of people actually left town yesterday. I mean, the interstate was swamped with people. I'm talking about jam-packed, bumper to bumper at times, and standstill traffic. You would not believe how many folks were trying to get out of harm's way. With city uh, officials, actually, we spoke to earlier today, Mike, said that they think more people left with Delta than they did with Laura six weeks ago. So I think it's safe to say that people got the message here that they needed to get out of Dodge and out of harm's way. Mike? Hey, Tevin, right here in Scott. Uh, we are off to your east by about an hour. And again, once... Uh, again, we're getting the showers and, and a lot of wind now. They're gusting upwards of 30 to 35 miles an hour. Certainly not enough wind yet to knock down trees and knock out power. But you can see on the radar what's coming our way, that I wall now coming on shore. Uh, it won't be long before we have the official uh, statement from the Hurricane Center that we have seen our fourth landfall in Louisiana and a record-setting tenth landfalling tropical storm or hurricane. This will be our fifth hurricane of the season along the U.S. coastline, just incredible. But look at all the standing water out of here. This is uh, one of the impacts we're gonna see across Louisiana, four, five, six inches of rain. Some areas may see more rain, now a pretty good wind gust. And it's gonna be like this for about another three to four hours. The rain's gonna end pretty quickly because everything is basically along and ahead of the circulation. And then once it goes by, once it goes north of I-10, we're gonna see the rain wind down but then we're going to have the winds come around from the backside from the southwest. So it's going to be still very windy in this part of uh, the state and across the whole state. And uh, in I-10 area, from Lake Charles over to Lafayette, those southwest winds could gust later on this evening upwards of 30, 40, maybe even 50 miles an hour. So even though the rain will end and the storm will go by and continue to weaken, we'll have, still have some uh, gusty winds. Let's go back to Carl Parker in the studio. And Carl, uh, we're awaiting the advisory coming up. Uh, not long away here in a few minutes. Maybe you have it right now. You can give us the latest from the Hurricane Center, see if they've knocked those winds back once again. Yeah, I believe so, Mike. Certainly that's been the trend for several hours now, and we're actually seeing a, a decoupling now where you've got uh, the weather moving away from the low-level center as it feels those stronger winds. But this band of storms now coming into areas east of Cameron, and that's towards Grand Chenier and also towards Pecan Island there. That's where we're going to see some of the strongest wind that is now just south of Gaeda as well as Bell City and Lake Arthur and will be coming up towards Jennings and some of that getting into Lake Charles. So weather getting a lot worse here over the next few hours. And you see also the thunderstorm.
thunderstorms on the west side of the circulation. We're going to see a lot of convergence there and those thunderstorms going for quite some time. So the gusty winds, probably 60 to 75 miles per hour, continuing in Lake Charles for several hours tonight. Strong wind also coming up in Alexandria. And of course, that onshore push of wind uh, right through tonight, even into early tomorrow morning. And then we see a tornado threat uh, making its way up into Mississippi and Alabama beyond that. Uh, looking at the current surge values, they continue to rise 5.7 feet just west of Vermilion Bay, a life threatening surge along the Louisiana coast. We'll have much more in Delta coming up in just a minute. You're watching America's most trusted TV news network. We've got a severe weather threat. Winds have been gusting the full force of this thing. The Weather Channel. Our continuing coverage of Hurricane Delta as it comes ashore, our 10th landfall in this historic 2020 season. We are covering it for you. And right now we are watching storm surge come up big time in Vermilion Bay, almost at six feet right now. Uh, that is one of the huge things that we're watching right now. We're also heavy rain with this. We will have complete analysis of what's happening with the structure. And we've been talking about how it's starting to weaken the storm. But please don't forget that all the factors that we we're talking about in terms of surge, rainfall, flooding, wind have already been factoring into a landfalling, weakening storm. We got a live team coverage for you, of course, this evening out in the field. Mike Dennis and Alex Wilson back in the studio as well to cover you from that angle. All sorts of stuff uh, going on here. We are in Brove Ridge, Louisiana right now. We want to bring in the sheriff of St. Martin Parish. This is Beckett Bro. And we are in Bro Bridge. Think about that. We've got a relation there somewhere. Uh, thanks for talking to me, Cheryl. I'm going to just kind of do my proper uh, social distancing here. You've got your own microphone. Yes, Let's sir. talk about, you know, where we are right now with this. Any, any issues that you're facing with these first heavy rain days?